Hello, media to me again, and we are still in the season of Christmas, but aha, we are going to the end of a year, a new one is coming. And I bet you that most of us are getting into that ritual that has become a yearly one for, I suspect, 97, maybe 98, maybe 99% of all of us. And what am I talking about? New Year Resolution. New Year Resolution. Hmm. That ubiquitous cycle of decisions and decisions that mirrors our regrets, that mirrors our hopes. Sometimes at the end of the year, we have even taken heart. We have agreed that what we plans to do for that year, we have not achieved. But I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you that there is one resolution you should make. Ah, you're wondering. Make a resolution to be a person of peace, a person of goodwill, a person with a mediation mindset, a person who does what everybody talks about, but not only talk about it, but does it. You know that thing when they say to you that when life throws you lemons, what should you do? Make lemonade. I'll tell you, when life throws you conflicts, when life throws you a dispute, make mediation. That is our resolution for the year. And I'll tell you, it makes sense. It really does make sense. Make up your mind going forward. Let your, our resolution be that we're going to be at peace with men. That even if somebody offends me, I'm not going to think of it from the point of view of my feelings or my thoughts. Because one of the things that mediation teaches us, at least that's one thing that I have learned personally, um, is that more than any other area of life where it comes to dealing with disputes or conflicts, mediation is the one thing that teaches you to consider the other side. In fact, I'll tell you a little story here. In one of my training sessions uh, a few years ago, uh, we were in a mediation and there was, a, there was a, a, a very experienced mediator who was leading us and I was acting as a representative in mediation, what in some places we call a mediation advocate. And after we had been talking to one another across the table and going back and forth, and we had made good progress, but not sufficient, the mediator did something. He said, I know that we are not close to settlement, but I want you to do something for me. I want us to draft a settlement agreement now. I know we haven't settled. And all of us was like, uh, but we haven't, we haven't settled. What is there to write? What is there to put together? He said, no, no, I just want you to do an exercise. Let us imagine that, you know, we have come to the end of this mediation. I must commend both of you, both sides, because you have been very cordial. You've been very kind. You've been very nice. Uh, and I just thought to myself, why don't we just go straight away and draft the mediation settlement agreement? But I want you to do something. He said, um, Mr. Akisaya, I know those are your clients. Now, I want you to write the mediation settlement agreement as if though they were your clients. And you, you, I don't want to mention the name, you write the mediation settlement agreement as though Mr. Akisoya's clients were your client instead. So both of you go away and write the mediation settlement agreement. And gentlemen, shall we meet after lunch? Uh, give an hour or so. Will three be okay to come reconvene? We said yes, not knowing that he had set a trap for us. When we came back at three o'clock, you know the interesting thing? 
not neither of us had anything to draft. We couldn't write anything down. And he said, I know that none of you have written anything down. And I said, as we say in Yoruba and John, how did you know? Did you set a spy to be looking at us in our corners? How did you know we are not doing anything? He said, I know you could not write anything. You would not be able to put anything down. He said, you know the reason? It, you were not able to think of the other side. He said, and that is the real problem why we all have these disputes. And I've never, I've never forgotten this experience. And this goes back almost eight years now. And what he taught me was that the reason most times why we don't even, where, why disputes start, and even when they start, when it is difficult to resolve them, is because many times we are unable to put ourselves in the shoes of the other person. We are unable to understand why they are thinking the way they are thinking. And in fact, we actually say to them, they have no right for thinking the way they are thinking. They are not justified to think the way they are thinking. They have no basis for it. Forgetting that everything you could say about what they are saying, they could say the same thing about you too. So when we could not reason, he then said, now tell me, what were you struggling with? And when we began to deal with what we were struggling with, why we could not do it? Voila! We had brought up the real issues, the real interests, and we were able to address it. And once we addressed the real interests and we were able to face truth with each other, by 5.30, we were done. The mediation was over. We now drafted a mediation settlement agreement, very simple, very down to earth. We could, we, we could finish because of one thing. We had learned to think not about ourselves, but we had learned to think about the other person. Can we make that our New Year resolution? That in the coming year, it will not be about me but it will be about my neighbor. Even when I'm offended, I will try to understand where the offense is coming from. It will help better. Well, Happy New Year in advance. I trust you'll make a good resolution. Take care.